A forgotten knowledge, a seed thought dead begins to bloom. There is nothing, there has never been anything wrong with me. And still others who take back their names, their language, their music. They dig up the old words, the vocabulary of who we are, write it on signs, paint the air with their voices, move together in the streets, uncountable footsteps shaking the world. The words that tell us we are many, the words that make them afraid, the words that make us free. The Meadows by Stephanie Oaks. My name is Lucy and this is Teen Pride Book Talks, the program on AADL TV where each episode I take a few minutes to talk about a young adult book that is both representative of and inclusive of folks in the LGBTQIA plus community. And the book that I am going to be talking about today is the book that that quote was from, which is called The Meadows by Stephanie Oaks. I just finished this book this morning and it is a book that's going to stick with me for a long time. It is a quietly devastating book that's full of really rich voices and characters. The book begins in what we assume is the future. It's a dystopian book. It's been compared to The Handmaid's Tale sort of meets Never Let Me Go and there is some truth in that. I can see where the inspiration would come from for those but I think that The Meadows takes some of those ideas in a different direction and definitely takes like the idea of the handmaid's tale and the dystopia that that exists in into a more diverse space the book begins with a woman named eleanor who is working in the city and part of the reason we know right away that this is some different world than ours is that she is describing ears and eyes so speakers that record and cameras that record so that everything that you do or say is seen and heard and collected by some group of people and some algorithm. Eleanor is working as an adjudicator and we learn a little bit more about what this is. It is someone who goes and meets with people who have been to facilities where they were reformed to make sure that they are remaining reformed before they are sort of allowed to fully integrate back into society. Eleanor runs into a man at a cafe. She doesn't know him. She just sees a post he's looking at about a place called The Glades. And he and Eleanor start speaking a little bit about past experiences. And she mentions that she was at a place called The Meadows. These are the facilities where young people go to be reformed. And Eleanor and this man talk about being reformed. This is our introduction to The Meadows and the world in which it exists. The way that the facilities are built to people living in this world in both the cities and in small rural villages from all socioeconomic backgrounds is that the facilities are for the best and the brightest people in all society. So children and teens really want to get that acceptance letter and be invited to come to one of these facilities. The story is told in a series of layered flashbacks. We get these dual timelines. So we get Eleanor in this time where she is an adjudicator. She's graduated as the best girl from the Meadows and she's working in this role, uh, a role that she got to choose, evaluating these other graduates' success. And then the flashbacks, the alternating chapters are of Eleanor's life a little bit in what she calls the cove, her small village, before she goes to the meadows and then her acceptance to the meadows and her time at the meadows. She is living with an adoptive mother named Stella before she goes away to a facility. Her mother is not maternal at all, doesn't even really seem to like Eleanor very much, takes care of her, provides for her, but doesn't nurture her in any way or provide any emotional support. And she won't tell Eleanor anything about where she really came from, where Eleanor really came from, who her parents actually are. In one of these first scenes in the cove, Eleanor and Stella end their day by watching something called the dispatches. This is the only media that's available to them on any sort of screen. And the dispatches are something that show what life was like before, before what is called the turn. We start to learn that the world that exists now is this post-apocalyptic world which has been rebuilt after a complete climate collapse. So the entire world was shattered when, as they say, the climate broke and the world has been rebuilt and resettled by a group of people called 
the quorum. We see how sheltered and limited Eleanor's life has been. She's never traveled beyond her little village, beyond her cove. So these dispatches that she watches, they are her only way of knowing about the world at large. So all of the information that she receives and that people in the cove receive, for the most part, is being fed from one source. And she says, the dispatches were my only means of seeing how others lived. Sometimes enormous houses out of my dreams, screens that took up whole walls, slick self-driving cars shaped like bullets, bowls mounted with fruit in colors brighter than anything we got at the market. Other times, dim huts, worse off than any place I'd seen. And it was those that gave me the greatest thrill because any child could be chosen for a facility. The state knew each of our names, could track us on satellites and cameras affixed to roofs and defunct telephone poles. The algorithms conducted intelligence tests just by watching us handle everyday problems, always compiling and weighing results. It didn't matter where the child was going, the estuary, the pines, the archipelago. Their faces beamed when they opened their letters. Parents wrapped them up crying proud, tears. That is how I grew up, dreaming of a place beyond the cove. This is how the facilities become this dream for every child. Eleanor does get a letter and it is not like she's seen in the dispatches. There are no cameras filming her. There is no proud parent crying and giving her a hug. She receives this letter after she has exchanged a kiss with her best friend, June. She and June have grown up together in the cove and they act on this attraction they have. And it's right after that that she receives a letter to go to the meadows. June also receives a letter to go to a different facility. And we start to see what this book is really about and what these facilities really are. We get, as the story continues, these small little tidbits of information and stories where we discover that the true nature of these places, like the meadows, which has a really heavy handed approach to instilling feminine arts and crushing same-sex inclinations, in this case, lesbian inclinations, through what is essentially conversion therapy. And this is the big issue that Stephanie Oakes is taking on in this book, but doing it through this new, different world. And this is what I mean by this story being quietly devastating, this plot and these characters are revealed to us bit by bit. It's a long book, but it doesn't feel like it at any point because there is always something changing, something that's surprising to you as a reader, but there are a lot of points when you, as the reader, can see ways in which the characters, the students, mostly at these facilities, are being manipulated and being gaslighted, and it's frustrating, but there's also an understanding of how the students can sort of be lulled into believing what they're being told is the truth and the best course for them. Sometimes it gets psychologically, mentally, physically exhausting to constantly be fighting. And it becomes easier to believe the truths about yourself that you're hearing and to go along with trying to better yourself in a way that you are being told is the right path to follow. So the quorum imposes order in part by imposing these really strict gender roles in society. The whole population is controlled by these algorithms and the algorithm sees and hears everything. So it's going to know if there's any transgressions, anything that the quorum deems to be unacceptable. When Eleanor is at the meadows with these other girls, they are told eventually by the women who run the meadows, women called matrons, that the reason for the turn, the reason for this breaking of the climate was due to the fact that women were having relationships with other women, that that is the reason. And that is a, a really giant and devastating thing to hear when you believe you are at this place where you have been chosen because you are the best and the brightest. So somehow, you have the potential to become the best and the brightest, but in your mind, you know that you have done this thing that you're being told is responsible for the collapse of the world. Eleanor and other girls that she gets to know at the Meadows, some of whom become very close friends, all sort of realize that they have similar stories to share about why they did end up at the Meadows, how they proceed from there and how some of them are not willing to go along with what's being told to them and how some of them absolutely believe that they need to be fixed 
that there's something wrong with them is a big part of the story and it's different for each and every one of them. The matrons at the meadow don't use force. They tell you every decision is made by you, but there's this moral messaging and there's this never force only guidance idea that is in fact very manipulative. And when you're told these huge untruths, like the fact that because of who you are, and because of how you identify and because of whom you're attracted to, the world has been destroyed. You're gonna seek the guidance that's being provided at that point. And I don't want to give away a lot about the story. Eleanor does make some really close friends. As I said, at the Meadows, one is a girl named Sheila. Eleanor and Sheila share a set of beliefs, but ultimately the way that they adhere to those beliefs is different. Eleanor also meets a girl named Rose who's brought to the meadows later than the rest of them who they are told is has been in a place called the wastelands which is a place for people who aren't following the rules and she was brought now to the meadows to try and be straightened out she and Eleanor become close yet there's also sort of a strange animosity between them. Eleanor is attracted to Rose, but also maybe frightened of the way that Rose refuses to accept any of the rules. And this idea that you can hold separate truths in each hand, that you can believe two different things at one time, is also a really big theme in this book. And it's something that Eleanor has to learn over and over again and to figure out about the world and the people that she meets and the ways that she feels that she can be this and that, that the world can be this and that. Reading the book, I found that I couldn't predict. I never could figure out the real truths about people. And that's one of the things that just makes it so memorable and made it so hard to put down when I was reading it. The characters beyond Eleanor are really well-crafted. Eleanor, as a character, is very complex, has a very distinct voice. She's fiercely passionate about a lot of things. She has this big desire to be loved and accepted because she hasn't really experienced that, but she also has received, like all these people, these years and years of programming. It's hard for her sometimes not to let the paranoia around that get the best of her, but she's also determined not to be squashed by that. And so she's a fighter, but she's conflicted. Getting the story from really inside her mind it is such a good way to learn about these multiple truths that can exist and also to see how devastating it is for people to be told that who they are is inherently wrong and damaging to other people. Stephanie Oakes is using this story to give us an interpretation of issues surrounding conversion therapy, surrounding homophobia, misogyny, racism, and it makes it sad, it makes it melancholy, but there's also hope in this book and there's also a lot of strength in these characters that that provides that hope. The author provides a really great note at the end of the book that does have resources and she talks about some of the content in the book. The world that these girls and the other people at facilities and the population at large is wrestling with in this book is really strict and rigid and full of things like homophobia and misogyny and racism. There's a little bit in the book from the new constitution that has been crafted by the quorum, which I'll share with you. We hold that everything has a perfect order and in that order, a perfect place for each citizen. We hold that ambiguity of gender shall be expunged. A civil society builds a border around the genders. Each citizen shall clearly inhabit the region they were born into. Every man shall employ logic and control in his devotion to his country, his domestic realm and himself. Every woman shall perform the vital work of supporting the endeavors of men and producing future generations. No deviation from this order shall be permitted. A world like that requires education that is in fact conversion. What Stephanie Oakes is doing so well is showing us also how it doesn't have to be necessarily a world like that that pushes the strict adherence and 
a world where conversion therapy can exist. And that's the unfortunate truth about this book, and that is what she's getting at, that though it has been made illegal in some states, conversion therapy is still happening, and it happens under the radar, happens in sneaky ways. Like a lot of dystopian books, this one is very effective in that it is holding a mirror up for us, and that's something that dystopia is really useful for and can be very frightening. One last thought that I will share with you is part of the note that the author wrote where she says, I don't know if books can change the world, but I know they can reflect the world back on itself. The events of the meadows, though augmented and fictionalized, represent realities for countless LGBTQ plus people. That's just one of the many reasons that you should read this book. It is impactful. It's important. But it's also just really well written and it's very compelling and the characters are so rich and the world building is so wonderful. And when you find out how the meadows and other facilities are created, when you find out the technology behind that, that's this whole other piece of this book that is really interesting. There's so much to get into, and I didn't want to reveal too much about the book in talking about it. I hope that I've given you enough to make you want to read The Meadows by Stephanie Oaks, because I highly recommend that you do. Thank you so much for joining me.